Patch 1.1.7 has arrived. With this patch, Crate has added four new Crucible maps to choose from called Crucible of the Bogs, Woods, Stars, and Crags. The first two are in the flavor of the Ashes of Malmoth content, and the next two are in the style of the Forgotten Gods expansion pack. In addition to the new zones, the tribute blessings you can receive from Terralia have received a slight buff this patch, but only for pets. Now on to items. 38 lower level epics are receiving mythical treatment this patch, meaning that they now have level 94 counterparts, basically just more usable items at max level as a result. There have been 35 new monster and frequent greens added to the game, 30 of which are in the base game, breathing new life into the early areas of Grim Dawn. Some of these items are pretty gnarly looking as well if you like to play dress up at the illusionist. With that, item skill modifiers like the ones I show here are now part of the base game. You previously needed Ashes of Malmoth to benefit from these types of items. Item skill modifiers have become part of Grim Dawn's identity, so it makes sense to bring this feature to the base game. With the addition of the 35 new green MIs to the game, they have also increased the drop chance of epic and legendary monster and frequents across the board as well, hopefully making things such as the Magi Quart Rings slightly less painful to farm. Now onto affix changes. I made this diagram here showing what triple and double rare items are. Rare items in Grim Dawn are pretty basic. You have a base item, which could be a monster and frequent green as I call them, or just a plain old item with no base stats. Then when they drop, they can roll with a prefix and suffix from a pretty lengthy list of rare and magic affixes. You can also use a mod like Rainbow Filter to understand the items in this game a little bit better. I'll leave a link to this mod below. When the prefix and suffix are both of rare quality, which tend to be more powerful and packed with stats, you can find yourself a pretty good item. When the prefix and suffix are both rare on a monster and frequent green item, then we get a damn good item, and we tend to call them triple rares. In many cases, they can be more powerful than legendary items. Previous to patch 1.1.7, these were extremely uncommon to find, never mind getting the prefix and suffix combo you desired. But with patch 1.1.7, they have done a few things to make this better. Previously, items could sometimes roll with one rare affix, robbing you of a decent item. This has been removed from the game, and items like this will pretty much no longer exist. <sighs> Nemesis monster and frequent items will always have at least one rare affix now. All other monster and frequents have had their chance of dropping with a rare affix increased. All of these tweaks should increase our chance to find double and triple rare items more reliably. And finally, the wildest change in this patch is the new smart loot they have implemented onto item drops. Reading directly from the patch, all gear is now more likely to roll magic and rare affixes with damage types appropriate to it. And the example they use is a fire scepter will be significantly more likely to roll affixes with fire damage, a pet ring with pet bonuses, etc. I did put this to the test at the blacksmith as well. Seems like it works. In roughly six crafts, I made a storm charged, storm surge pistol of thunder. It might not be a double rare, but those are some pretty fitting stats. Another little tweak not mentioned in the patch notes was the increase to transparency to items on the ground. They made them a little bit more see-through to be less obstructing, it seems. Very nice detail there. And then we get a ton of other changes and tweaks here to classes, skills, devotions, item stat tweaks, tweaks etc. I can't talk. So many changes I needed to increase the allowable character limit on the forum posts just to post it. Most things seem like buffs or increases. Of course, there are nerfs here and there. All devotions that were modified look to be buffed except for stone form and messenger of war getting their retaliation damage reduced. Many early level slash leveling components are seeing buffs in some ways, which is a welcome change. As well as almost all of these seal type components getting modified, with seal of annihilation getting a bit of a nerf to its OA and DA debuff. That component is widely used, so I figured it was worth mentioning. And there are class changes here, once again mostly increases and tweaks, I think. Ironically, my favorite ones are the removal of the cooldown to Guardians of Imperion, as well as the Blade Spirits, so you can summon them on command, and it's just kind of fun. Oh, God damn, what am I doing with my life? Wrecked by Protoss is a very well and in-depth overview of items, builds, class changes, and stuff like that over on his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to hit below. Don't forget to check out GrimTools.com as well, where you can peruse the item database for pre- and post-patch item comparison if you're into that sort of thing. And that'll about do it for that one. There's a couple other things I wanted to mention, but the video is already running kind of long. Make sure you follow me on the Twitch channel, and we'll catch you on the next one. Also, don't forget to sub, because there's going to be more content coming out about double rares in the future.